Hey there, I want to tell you a story. Uh, it's, it's a story that really it starts out very sad. Uh, it involves my car getting burglarized, but it goes pretty well from, after, from that point on. Um, I got to deal with a bunch of very helpful, nice people, whether it was the insurance company, uh, one of the body shops. But the story I want to tell you is about Stacy. Now, Stacy's the guy who replaced my window that had been busted by the burglars. And uh, by virtue of the weather conditions and such, Stacy, who's typically a mobile glass guy, uh, invited me to come over to his house. And uh, I showed up at his house and I pulled into his garage and I pulled into like a Taj Mahal of garages. I mean, I went in there and immediately I knew that I had a pro on my hands. Every tool was in its place. The place was clean. It was well lit. It was just gorgeous. And so just by virtue of pulling in there, I knew I was in good hands. So I got out of the car, part, you know, I got out of the car, stood there and watched. And uh, by the way, I, I've never not enjoyed watching other people work. And so it was a really good situation for me to get to watch other people work. But in this case, it was just one person. It was Stacy. So Stacy went to work replacing my, my window. And immediately it struck me how many pieces he had to take off of that door in order to just get to the window. And I started thinking about one of my favorite phrases, and that is, general knowledge plays, specialized knowledge pays. So general knowledge, you can watch Jeopardy or you know a lot of game shows, and you can see that people that are filled with all kinds of general knowledge can win a few bucks on those shows. But specialized knowledge, whether you're a brain surgeon or a, you know how to sharpen a knife a particular way, or in the case of Stacy, you know how to change out the glass in a car, you can make a good living. So that was my that was my first part of my visit that struck me was just Stacy was the the epitome of specialized knowledge. The second thing was he's working with his hands. He clearly enjoyed working with his hands. He's a tool guy. He could see all these things. So to this moment, I still don't know what caused me to just blurt out, but I said to him, did you go to college? And he stood up and turned to me and he kind of looked sad and he said, no, I didn't. I probably should have. And my reaction was, wow, I, <laughs> I'm not sure that you should have. You seem to be doing fine. Uh, and he, you know, he had this nice house that was clearly one that he owned. And then subsequently found out he had some investment properties. And you know, here he was, a guy approaching 60 who had financially done okay. But he still felt a little like mourning or sadness about not having gone to college. So I told him, that I basically said, well, I'm not going to participate in that because I think it's great that you're working with your hands because you're clearly good at it and it seems like you enjoy it. And he said, yeah, I, I do. So then we kept talking. <laughs> and here's the thing that to me is even funnier, having seen his reaction to not having gone to college. He's a voracious reader. He has read more books in his lifetime than most people who have gone to college have read in tw twice their lifetimes. He he started talking about all these books he had read and it was just fascinating. Here was this man committed to a lifetime of learning. In addition to that, he was going to community college, taking a fundamentals of electricity class, a physics class that was both a lecture and a lab. And so he had this reaction. He had this, I don't want to say it was a chip on his shoulder, but definitely a little bit of a sadness about not saying, yeah, I went to college. Yeah, I'm a college graduate. And yet here was this man who was living a productive life, doing work that he enjoyed and still continuing his lifetime of learning. So why am I telling you this story? Because if you're one of the people who has this, has always had this feeling, you know what? I just want to work with my hands. If that resonates with you, I want to encourage you to do everything you can to work with your hands. Go to college if you want to, that's fine. I'm not going to say don't go to college, but if you have a drive to work with your hands, I want you to know that that's a special gift and, and you owe it to yourself and your own happiness to do everything you can to find the opportunities that let you work with your hands.